Hello class. Today we'll be learning about concentric zone model. This was actually put forward by Ernest Burgess. And Ernest Burgess was a Canadian American urban sociologist. He was born in Canada and he was educated in the Kingfisher College in Oklahoma and continued graduate studies in sociology at the University of Chicago. He was actually a student and also the colleague of uh, one of the founding members of Chicago School, that is Professor Robert E. Park. And in 1916, he actually became the faculty member of the University of Chicago. Burgess also served as the 24th president of the American Sociological Association. And he died on December 27, 1966. One of his most famous book, it was written in 1921 along with uh, Robert E. Park and the name is Introduction to the Science of Sociology. This is one of the most influential texts of his time. It was considered as the Bible of sociology. Another famous contribution which he along with Robert Park and Mackenzie was the book called The City and it was published in 1925 and he suggested that Ernest Berger suggested that a city develops somewhat the same way as a tree. It expands outward in a series of concentric rings or zones over time. Although Burgess assumed that this economic competition was central, but like Robert Park, he also said that there are other factors also which are important in the development of a city. He described the city in terms of four main zones and there's also a fifth zone which he calls as a commuter zone which is outside the city limits. He offers a very descriptive framework in which both aspects of human ecology, physical land use and human relationship are implicit. And when he was thinking about the city, he definitely was talking about Chicago, Chicago of his time. The concentric model was based upon the process of invasion and succession. So there are two processes which happened simultaneously, whereby one social group actually succeeds in establishing itself by pushing out an other in the value of urban space. So there are few people who come into a space and they actually displace the people who, are, who were actually staying in those places. The growing demand for land of the immigrant population for housing and other activities force them to move out to outer areas. An invasion refers to the inflow of rural population. We find a lot of people during, especially during the industrial revolution, we saw that many people moved out from rural spaces to come to urban areas or come to industrial sites and they try to settle there. So, invasion refers to the inflow of a rural population towards the city centre for various purposes like uh, employment. It has a negative impact on the quality of life of the current population. See, when they are coming from a rural site and they come into the centre, there are, there are people who are staying there. But this has a negative impact on the quality of life of the current population and this phenomena is mostly associated with low income group people. Sometimes the highest status group finds it more comfortable and convenient to move out of the city and shift to the periphery. So what happens is actually there was a population who were a little influential but when the people from the urban spaces migrated to the center, these people who were settled over there, they tried to move out and shift to the periphery to a more comfortable place. 
Succession means a process that shows successive movement of people in outward zones as the need arises. This is viewed as an attack on the ecology or natural habitat of the outer zone. We find that in cities, there are very little spaces which have greenery. But in the suburban area or in the periphery, it is more of greenery and there are a lot of spaces unlike the city center. So these people who can afford to come out of the city center and occupy places will actually attack the natural habitat. Succession is a complementary process because it occurs only after invasion in cities. There is always competition for limited spaces. Only those people succeed who can afford the best price and get the desirable location for their business or home. Burgess understood this invasion succession process as a moving equilibrium of social order. And he says that this invasion and succession goes hand in hand. And uh, it is because of this, there is an equilibrium of social order. In other words, the essence of the model is that as a city grows, it expands radically from its center to different concentric zones. Concentric zone theory reflects an ongoing conflict between city dwellers and periphery villages. It also describes the process of concentration and segregation of social group within the growth of city structure. He actually gave a five ring of development. The first one, CBD or the Central Business Depot, Zone of Transition, third, Zone of Working Men's Home, four, Residential Home, and fifth one, Commuter Zone. This is the model that he had put forward. This is a very simple model and you find uh, in the center, we had the central business district, then the zone of transition, then the working men's zone of or the residential places. Then you have the residential sp uh, spaces of middle class and last, the commuter zone. Zone 1 or the CBD Central Business Depot. Central city Occupied by the departmental stores, you find banks, you find big buildings, office buildings, expensive uh, stores, you know. These are places which are situated in the center of a city. The land value is very high. Economic activity is also high. The greater number of people move into and out of it. And this is a point of origin of many of the public transport. It is not characterized by permanent residence. Zone 2 is a zone of transition, which is the oldest residential area surrounding the commercial core, containing the oldest houses in the poorest state of repair in the city. The area is continually being invaded by the outer growth of the central business district or zone. It houses the poorest population of the city including the most recent immigrants, people who actually migrate from the rural area, they come to this place to occupy this place and they are forced to share their residence with, uh, during this time, the criminals and the undesirable companies and all of whom use this common territory as a locus of operation. Third one is a zone of working men's home. It is a zone of working men's home. It is characterized by a predominance of two-family dwelling and there is an upward mobility of the working class resident. Actually, they try to move out of zone 2 and come to zone 3 and stay there. Amenities may be lacking, but socially, the area are fairly stable. Zone 4, the residential home. It is, a define, it is defined as the residential zone because it consists of better residents, including residential hotels and better quality apartments. The zone is characterized by middle class residential area and markets uh, for the local business district. Zone 5 is a commuter zone. It is a commuter zone in which the suburban area, the people have to move uh, to the core. I mean, it may take to 30 to 16 minutes to travel 
to the CBD or the Central Business Depot. And this, uh, they are willing to bear the inconvenience of distance that is moving from the periphery to the coal. They have to bear uh, a little bit of inconvenience because of the di distance. But they are living in a more cozy place, in a place which they wanted to, uh, where they do not engage other people or it is the wealthy restricted residents who do not include everybody. They try to, uh, you know, exclude people uh, with undesirable ethnic and racial traits. This theory was, even though it seems so simple, had a lot of criticisms. As I said, it was simple. That was the first criticism that came up. The model is too simple and limited in historical and cultural urban context. Second is that it was basically about America and its fast growing demographic uh, transition during the 1950s. And the model was developed uh, see, looking into just Chicago as a space. And this spatial difference in terms of ethnic, social and cultural status is not found everywhere or uh, what you find in America or what you find precisely in uh, Chicago may not be the situation in other parts of the world. And, uh, and you cannot generalize this that all cities grew up in a concentric way. There are different cities which grow because of various other reasons. So, however, even, even though it has a lot of criticism and it has been criticized, this still remains as a useful concept uh, because it talks about the way in which a city developed in a concentric way. And the, even though, as I said, there are, there are criticisms, it is still being referred today. As, my, as I end my class, I would just like to recap what we learned today. We learned about the concentric zone model, which was put forward by Ernest Berger. He put forward this concentric zone model in the book, uh, which he published in 1925. These are the five zones that he put forward. Central Business District, Zone of Transition, Working Men's Zone, Residential Zone, and Commuter Zone. And in this uh, theory or in this concept which he put forward, he based it on two concepts of invasion and succession. Invasion refers to the inflow of rural population towards the city for various purposes and succession means a process that shows successive movement of people in outward zones. This happens very simultaneously. Even though it has criticisms, it is one of the most discussed models of development of a city. Thank you.